Hello and welcome to Millennium News Hour. I am Tanziba Naurin. In today's bulletin, we will present important news from across the nation and the world. Let's begin with the headlines of the day. McCarthy fails again in bid for speaker, GOP in disarray. Biden to host Japan's Kishida for talks on North Korea economy. Biden aims to highlight bipartisanship amid House GOP chaos. McConnell celebrates milestone as Senate Dems retain power. FDA finalizes rule expanding availability of abortion pills. Twitter says it will relax ban on political advertising. Transgender Missouri inmate executed for fatal stabbing. Delta Airliner goes off icy taxiway in Minneapolis snowstorm. Sheriff says no foul play in Avengers Star Snow Tractor injury. Tony Award winner Chicago State Champion Frank Glutti dies. Some 200,000 turn out over three days to view Benedict's body. Japan's PM Kishida vows deeper alliance with US on defense. Meta fined 390 million euros in latest European privacy crackdown. Russian military flaws seen in troop deaths. Iran releases Oscar-winning film actress held over protest. UK's Sunak vows to have inflation tackle illegal migration. Pakistan orders malls to close early amid economic crisis. WHO worried about surge of COVID in China amid lack of info. Family says Hamlin's recovery moving in positive direction. And U.S. beats Britain to advance to United Cup mixed teams semis. Now news in detail. House Republicans flailed through a second day of multiple balloting witness day, unable to elect Representative Kevin McCarthy as House Speaker or to come up with a new strategy to end the political chaos that has tarnished the start of their new majority. For a fifth time, Republicans tried to vote McCarthy into the top job as the House plunged deeper into disarray. That came moments after the fourth vote showed 20 conservative holdouts still refusing to support him, unchanged from the previous time around and leaving him far short of the 218 votes typically needed to win the gavel. Let cooler, more rational heads prevail, said Representative Warren Davidson, representative of Ohio, a conservative aligned with the far-right Freedom Caucus who nevertheless nominated McCarthy. Representative Lauren Bobert, a farm Colorado conservative, nominated Representative Byron Donalds 
Florida, the chosen protest candidate of the day, and called for former President Donald Trump, the conservative's hero, to tell McCarthy, Sir, you do not have the votes and it's time to withdraw. Earlier Wednesday, Trump had done the opposite, urging Republicans to vote for McCarthy. Close the deal, take the victory, he wrote on his social media site. Using all capital letters, do not turn a great triumph into a giant and embarrassing defeat. President Joe Biden will host Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida at the White House later this month for economic and security consultations, the U.S. administration announced Tuesday. White House Press Secretary Karen Jean Pierre said the January 13 meeting will include discussions of North Korea's nuclear and ballistic missile programs amid concerns over the potential for another nuclear test by the reclusive nation. Also on the agenda, economic issues, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, climate change and stability across the Taiwan Strait. President Biden will reiterate his full support for Japan's recently released national security strategy, its presidency of the G7, and its term as a non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council, Jean Pierre said. The leaders will celebrate the unprecedented strength of the U.S.-Japan alliance and will set the course for their partnership in the year ahead. The two leaders last met in Bali, Indonesia, during November's Group of 20 summit. President Joe Biden's visit to a notoriously dilapidated bridge connecting Ohio and Kentucky is a chance for him to showcase accomplishments and talk up the virtues of bipartisanship while rubbing shoulders with Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell. The trip on Wednesday was also about cold hard cash. It's a giant bridge, man, Biden said this week when asked about his planned trip to the Brent Spence Bridge. It's a lot of money. It's important. Indeed, the nearly $1 trillion that Biden's administration is doling out for roads and bridges, broadband networks, and water projects across America will be critical not just for the communities getting the help, but to the Democratic president's political theory that voters are hungry for bipartisanship that delivers tangible results, as the prospects for massive transformational legislating diminish rapidly this year in a divided Washington, the White House and top cabinet officials aim to focus instead on selling Biden's recent achievements and demonstrating how the new laws directly affect Americans. Democrats are again claiming the Senate majority, but much of the chamber's focus Tuesday was on the top Republican as Mitch McConnell became the longest-serving Senate leader in history. McConnell, who is 80 years old, surpassed Montana Senator Mike Mansfield's record of 16 years as party leader when the Senate convened midday to begin the new Congress. While the Kentucky Republican has acknowledged he would prefer his own party to be taking charge, the majority is better, he says frequently. He celebrated his own personal milestone with a Senate floor speech looking back at party leaders and their different styles over the decades. And Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer of New York cemented a legacy of his own after winning a second term as leader and also being sworn in as the longest-serving senator from New York. Democrats will go into the new Congress with a 51-49 majority, with newly independent Senator Kristen Sinema receiving her committee assignments from Democrats. The Food and Drug Administration on Tuesday finalized a rule change that broadens availability of abortion pills to many more pharmacies, including large chains and mail order companies. The Biden administration partially implemented the change last year, announcing it would no longer enforce a long-standing requirement that women pick up the medicine in person. Twister's action formally updates the drug's labeling to allow many more retail pharmacies to dispense the pills so long as they complete a certification process. The change could expand access at both brick and mortar stores and online pharmacies. 
women can get a prescription via telehealth consultation with a health professional and then receive the pills through the mail, where permitted by law. Still, the rule changes impact has been blunted by numerous state laws limiting abortion broadly and the pills specifically. Legal experts foresee years of court battles over access to the pills as abortion rights proponents bring test cases to challenge state restrictions. Twitter says it will ease up on its three-year-old ban on political advertising, the latest change by Elon Musk as he tries to pump up revenue after purchasing the social media platform last year. The company tweeted late Tuesday that we are relaxing our ads policy for cause-based ads in the US. We also plan to expand the political advertising we permit in the coming weeks, the company said from its Twitter safety account. Twitter banned all political advertising in 2019, reacting to growing concern about misinformation spreading on social media. At the time, then-CEO Jack Dorsey said that while internet ads are powerful and effective for commercial advertisers, that power brings significant risks to politics, where it can be used to influence votes to affect the lives of millions. The latest move appears to represent a break from that policy which had banned ads by candidates, political parties, or elected or appointed government officials. A Missouri inmate was put to death Tuesday for a 2003 killing in what is believed to be the first execution of a transgender woman in the U.S. Amber McLaughlin, 49 years old, was convicted of stalking and killing a former girlfriend, then dumping the body near the Mississippi River in St. Louis. McLaughlin's fate was sealed earlier Tuesday when Republican Governor Mike Person declined a clemency request. McLaughlin spoke quietly with his spiritual advisor at her side as the fatal dose of pentobarbital was injected. McLaughlin breathed heavily a couple of times, then shut her eyes. She was pronounced dead a few minutes later. I'm sorry for what I did, McLaughlin said in a final written statement. I am a loving and caring person. A database on the website for the Anti-Execution Death Penalty Information Center shows that 1,558 people have been executed since the death penalty was reinstated in the mid-1970s. All but 17 of those put to death were men. The center said there were no known previous cases of an openly transgender inmate being executed. McLaughlin began transitioning about three years ago at the state prison in Potosi. A Delta jet went off an icy taxiway after landing in a showstorm in Minneapolis, but no passengers were injured. The airline said the Airbus A320 landed safely Tuesday night on a flight from Los Cabos, Mexico, Delta said in a statement, but the nose gear of the plane exited the taxiway while turning toward the gate due to icy conditions, it said. It happened around 6.40 p.m. It took about an hour to get the 147 passengers off the plane and bus to the terminal, Jeff Lee, a spokesman for the Metropolitan Airports Commission, told the Star Tribune. The plane was stuck in the snow until sometime between 9 and 10 p.m. when crews removed it from the taxiway, close to the north end of the runway, Lee said. The incident did not disturb airport operations, he said. But unrelated to the stock plane, the airport issued a ground stop at around 7.30 p.m., putting a temporary halt on planes operating on the airfield because of the icy conditions. One runway reopened at around 9.15 p.m., Lee said. The serious injuries actor Jeremy Rayner suffered while using a snow tractor to free a snowbound motorist on a private mountain road near Lake Tahoe appeared to be the result of a tragic accident. The sheriff in Reno said Tuesday, the 51-year-old Avengers star was seriously hurt when he was run over by his own snowcat after using it to free a vehicle driven by a family member that became stuck in three feet of fresh mountain snow on New Year's Day, Washoe County Sheriff Darren Burlam said. 
An investigation is continuing but there were no signs of foul play or any indication Renner was impaired at the time of the Sunday morning incident, Balam told reporters. At this point in the investigation, we believe this is a tragic accident, the sheriff said. He was being a great neighbor and he was plowing those roads for his neighbors. The accident left Rayner in critical but stable condition with chest and orthopedic injuries. According to a publicist and sheriff's officials who said Rayner was flown by medical helicopter about 25 miles to a Reno hospital. Frank Galati, an actor, director, teacher and adapter who was a pivotal figure in Chicago's theatre community and a two-time Tony Award winner, died Monday. According to Stephen Oaf Theatre, he was 79. Galati owned Twin Tonys in 1990, Best Play and Best Director. For his adaptation and staging of Stephen Oaf's production of John Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath, starring Gary Sinise as Tom George. He was also nominated for directing the 1998 celebrated musical Ragtime. His screenwriting credits include The Accidental Tourist, for which he was an Oscar nominee. He also was credited for writing the teleplay to Arthur Miller's play The American Clock in 1993. Now it's time for global updates. Pope Francis praised Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI's acute and gentle thought as he presided over a pact to witness the general audience in the Vatican. While thousands of people paid tribute to the former Pope on the final day of public viewing in St. Peter's Basilica. Francis was greeted by an enthusiastic crowd in the Paul VI auditorium and shouts of Viva il Papa or Long Live the Pope as he arrived for his weekly catechism appointment with the faithful. This week's audience was conducted while tens of thousands of people continued to flock to the Vatican to pay their respects to Benedict before the official viewing of his body ends Wednesday evening. From Monday through midday Wednesday, nearly 160,000 people had passed through the Basilica, the Vatican said. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida on Wednesday pledged to deepen his country's alliance with the United States under Japan's new defense policy that breaks from its exclusively self-defense only stance in the face of growing regional tensions. Kishida, speaking in a news conference after visiting Ise Shrine in central Japan, said he will visit Washington for talks with President Joe Biden to underscore the strength of the Japan-US alliance and highlight closer cooperation between the countries under Japan's new security and defense strategies adopted last month. The US visit is part of Kishida's upcoming trip to most of the group of seven countries beginning Monday. Japan will host this year's G7 summit in Hiroshima. Kishida said his meeting with Biden will be very important and more significant than showing my face as G7 president. We will show to the rest of the world an even stronger Japan-US alliance, which is a linchpin of Japanese security and diplomacy, Kishida said. We will also show our further cooperation toward achieving a free and open Indo-Pacific. Irish regulators on Wednesday hit Facebook parent Meta with hundreds of millions in fines for online privacy violations and banned the company from forcing European users to agree to personalized ads based on their online activity. Ireland's Data Protection Commission imposed two fines totaling 390 million euros in its decision in two cases that could shake up Meta's business model targeting users with ads based on what they do online. The watchdog fined Meta 210 million euros for violations of the European Union's strict data privacy rules involving Facebook and an additional 180 million euros for breaches involving Instagram. It's the Commission's latest punishment for Meta for data privacy infringements, following four other fines for the company since 2021 that total more than 900 million euros. The decision stems from complaints filed in May 2018 when the 27 nation EU's privacy rules, known as the General Data Protection Regulation or GDPR, took effect. 
Previously, Meta relied on getting informed consent from users to process their personal data to serve them personalized or behavioral ads. When GDPR came into force, the company changed the legal basis under which it processes user data by adding a clause to the terms of service for advertisements, effectively forcing users to agree that their data could be used that violates EU privacy rules. Unauthorized use of cell phones by Russian soldiers led to a deadly Ukrainian rocket attack on the facility where they were stationed, according to the Russian military, as it raised the death toll from the weekend attack to 89. General Lieutenant Sergei Sevdyukov said in a statement led to a state that phone signals allowed Kiev's forces to determine the coordinates of the location of military personnel and launch a strike. The Russian military is taking unspecified measures to prevent similar tragic incidents in the future. Severyukov said and promised to punish officials responsible for the blunder. The attack, one of the deadliest on the Kremlin's forces since the start of the war over 10 months ago, occurred one minute into the new year, according to Severyukov. It was the latest blow to the Kremlin's military prestige as it struggles to progress with its invasion of its neighbor and stirred renewed criticism inside Russia of the way the war is being conducted amid a successful Ukrainian counter-offensive. Iran released a prominent actress from an Oscar-winning film on Wednesday, nearly three weeks after she was jailed for criticizing a crackdown on anti-government protests, local reports said. Iran's semi-official ISNA news agency said Tarane Alidusti, the 38-year-old star of Asghar Farhadi's Oscar-winning 2016 film The Salesman, was released on bail. Her mother, Nadir Hakimilahi, had earlier said she would be released in a post on Instagram. After her release from the notorious even prison in Tehran on Wednesday, Alidosti posed with bunches of flowers, surrounded by friends. No further details have been released about her case. Alidosti was among several Iranian celebrities to express support for the nationwide protests and criticize the authorities' violent clampdown on dissent. She had posted at least three messages in support of the protests on Instagram before her account was disabled. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, in his first major speech of 2023 on Wednesday, pledged to halve inflation, grow the UK economy and stop illegal immigration. In his speech setting out the Conservative government's priorities for the year ahead, Sunak focused on tackling the UK's slowing economy and made promises to reduce national debt. He also vowed to pass new laws to stop migrants from arriving on UK, shorts in small boards, as well as cut massive backlogs in Britain's public health service. Those are the people's priorities. They are your government's priorities. And we will either have achieved them or not, Sunak said. No trick, no ambiguity. We are either delivering for you or we are not. We will rebuild trust in politics through action or not at all, he added. Sunak, who came to office in October after a tumultuous year in UK politics that saw the resignation of two other prime ministers, stressed that he would deliver stability. He said his first priority was to halve inflation this year to ease the cost of living and give people financial security. Pakistani authorities on Wednesday ordered shopping malls and markets to close by 8.30 p.m. as part of a new energy conservation plan aimed at easing the country's economic crisis. The move comes amid talks with the International Monetary Fund to soften some conditions on Pakistan's 6 billion bailout, which the government thinks will cause a further increase in inflation. Pakistan Defense Minister Khwaja Mohammad Asif and Minister for Power Gultam Dasgi said on Tuesday that the government decided to shut establishments early as part of the new energy conservation plan approved by the cabinet. Authorities also ordered waiting halls and restaurants to shut at 10 p.m. The measures are designed to save energy and curtail the cost of imported oil for which Pakistan spends $3 billion annually and which is used to generate most of Pakistan's electricity. Representatives of shopping malls, restaurants and shop owners want the government to reverse the decision. Many Pakistanis do their shopping and dine at restaurants as late as midnight. 
The head of the World Health Organization said Wednesday the agency is concerned about the risk to life in China amid the coronavirus explosive spread across the country and the lack of outbreak data from the Chinese government. WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus said the agency recently met with Chinese officials to underline the importance of sharing more details about COVID-19 issues, including hospitalization rates and genetic sequences. Even as the pandemic continues to reset globally since it began in late 2019, Data remains essential for WHO to carry out regular, rapid and robust risk assessments of the global situation, Tedros said at a press briefing. Tedros said he understood why numerous countries have recently taken measures against travelers coming from China, saying it's understandable that some countries are taking steps to prevent their citizens given the void of information about COVID-19. WHO Emergency Chief Dr. Michael Ryan said the testing protocols implemented by some countries were not a restriction against travel. Now it's time for business news. Let's have a look on today's sports stories. Damar Hamlin's recovery is moving in a positive direction two days after the Buffalo Bills' safety collapsed and went into cardiac arrest during a game against Cincinnati, the player's marketing representative said Wednesday. We all remain optimistic, Jordan Rooney, a family spokesman who described himself as a good friend of the player, told the Associated Press by phone. He said he was unable to go into further detail on Hamlin's status at the request of his family not to provide specifics. On Tuesday, the bill said Hamlin was listed in critical condition. Rooney said Hamlin's family was staying positive and buoyed by the outpouring of worldwide support, the second year Bills player has received since his heart stopped and he was resuscitated on the field before being loaded into an ambulance and transported to the University of Cincinnati Medical Center. Francis Tifo beat Britain's Daniel Evans 3-6-7-5-6-3 on Wednesday to move the United States into the United Cup mixed teams tournament semifinals. Tifo's victory gave the Americans an unbeatable 3-1 lead in the best of five Sydney City final. It means the U.S. will be among four teams in the semifinal portion of the tournament that begins Friday at Sydney's Ken Roswell Arena. Earlier, world number three Jessica Pegula gave the United States a 2-1 lead by beating Britain's Harriet Dirt 6-2-6-0. In the afternoon session, Madison Keys moved the U.S. ahead after rallying from a set down to defeat Katie Swan 
2663-64. But world number 14, Cameron Nuri, came back to post a 6457-64 win against number 9, Taylor Fritz, to level the match. Pigula and Fritz then own the final mixed doubles match to wrap up the 4-1 US win. Let's have a look on today's weather forecast. That's all in today's news. Keep watching Millennium News 24 for latest updates. Millennium TV US and Millennium News 24 network is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IP TV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all types of informative and entertainment programs. Thank you.